Hello and welcome to this demo on the ADFS 5758, simplifying the route to TOF certification of your safety system. My name is Aidan Frost and I'm a system applications engineer with the factory automation and process control business unit with analog devices. This year, ADI released the industry's first ever functional safety certified IC, the unipolar current output ADFS 5758 DAC. Functional safety is growing importance with in our industrial customer base, but the route to certification has many pain points. Uh, certification to IEC 61508 is costly and time consuming to achieve. For example, taking an off-the-shelf IC component and using it in a safety system is a complex task uh, because customers need to understand the failure rates and failure mechanisms within that IC and how to detect them. A hardware designer generally does not have access to the data required for safety components, such as the transistor count, uh, the internal layout and specification, the development process used, and they don't know the safe failure fraction or have access to an FMEDA for the part. Without an in-depth knowledge of how the IC was designed, it's extremely difficult to stand over safety performance of a device in front of a certifying body such as TUV Rhineland or TUV Sud. Additionally, uncovering <coughs> failure mechanisms late in the design cycle causes significant rework and schedule delays. Analog Devices has recently been bringing to market a family of functional safety compatible devices, the latest of which is the ADFS 5758 DAC. This current and voltage output DAC has been fully certified by TUV Rhineland to IEC 61508 Safety Integrity 2 or SIL Level 2 and Systematic Capability 3 for unipolar current output functions. Indeed, it is the industry's first safety certified DAC, complete with safety manual and an FMEDA. The ADFS 5758 is fully designed to IEC 61508 standards, includes on-chip diagnostic capability, provides current and uh, voltage output capability on a single terminal with standard industrial output ranges. It has a total unadjusted error of 0.05%. Dynamic power control means the worst case power dissipation is less than 200 milliwatts, making it industry leading in terms of efficient thermal management. It has an integrated independent 12-bit SAR ADC for what we term diagnostics under diagnostics or monitoring functions and allows external PCB level monitoring. This ADC means there is no need for an external monitoring ADC. Using a TOV certified IC such as ADI certified DAC means there is no need for conservative estimates and it reduces the design burden. So let's take a look at some of the safety features integrated into the ADFS 5758. When we power on the part, we immediately see an error flagged in the digital diagnostics results. This alerts us that the calibration memory is unrefreshed, meaning that the factory programmed calibration settings have not been loaded into the part. So if we go ahead and refresh the calibration memory, and we update the results, we can see that the bit has been cleared and we can go ahead now and clear the reset bit as well. Now I'll load a typical configuration for the ADFS 5758 with a 20 milliamp output current being driven into a one kilo ohm load. There are on-chip comparators that monitor many internal analog nodes within the device. A set of pre-programmed limits means that a deviation from normal operating parameters results in the fault pin being asserted and the corresponding fault bit being set on every digital register. We can detect reference errors, LDO errors, DC-DC errors, open circuit and short circuit conditions, and many others. There's even the ability to check if the LDO capacitor is still connected. For example, if I remove this jumper for the external reference, we can see that the fault LED is illuminated immediately on the board, and we can see that the fault pin has been inserted on the part. If I now go ahead and read the analog diagnostics results, we can see that the reference in fault error bit has also been set. If I try to clear this bit while the fault is still present, the device does not allow me to do so. 
So if I go ahead now and replace the jumper, we can now go ahead and clear the, clear the error and see that our fault pin is deasserted and indeed the LED has gone out. Next, if I short circuit the DC to DC converter uh, using a simple little jumper cable here, uh, we can see that we get an alert and a fault immediately being triggered on the board and indeed on the GUI. So shorting across the inductor, we get the fault LED illuminating and the fault bit being set. And if we read our diagnostics results, we can see all the corresponding DC-DC errors are now present on the GUI. The VI out pin on the ADFS5758 additionally has the ability to detect a miswire event due to user error. So if a technician goes ahead and shorts the output terminal to a voltage greater than the supply voltage, then a fault alert is sent to the user and the internal line protectors kick in and prevent any damage from occurring to the DAC. The ADFS5758 has an integrated 12-bit independent ADC to provide diagnostic information. It can monitor many internal nodes within the device, uh, has an integrated sequencer, including main die temperature, voltage on the sense buffers, various ground nodes, the reference voltage, and so on. Each time I update and read back the diagnostics results errors, we can see that the uh, corresponding ADC result is being updated as well. There are many digital diagnostics features integrated in the ADFS5758. The serial, serial interface has an 8-bit CRC enabled by default. There's also an SPI interface S-clock count feature. The windowed watchdog timer is another useful feature that helps ensure communication hasn't been lost between the system controller and the ADFS5758. One interesting feature is the ability to lock the user configuration space. This disables the ability to inadvertently change the configuration of the DAC once set. To unlock the configuration space, the user must write two sequential keys to the device before everything is again unlocked. We can see this in action if I go ahead and lock the configuration space. Click Apply Changes. Now if I try to disable the DAC output, apply it, we get the fault pin asserted, and we get the uh, user configuration lock alert bits being set. So outside of the ADFS5758, ADI has been building a family of safety devices to both ease the design burden and speed up the route to certification for safety systems. A complete signal chain is beginning to emerge now. The ADUCM360 is a low power microcontroller with dual Sigma Delta ADCs and comes supplied with a safety data sheet. We have the ADP1031, which is a completely integrated power and data isolation solution that was developed alongside the ADFS5758. It has three isolated power supply rails and seven isolated data channels. Again, it will shortly come supplied with a safety data sheet to ease the safety certification journey. Already covered in detail is the ADFS5758 voltage and current output DAC with dynamic power control. Also shortly releasing is the ADFS7124 24-bit Sigma Delta ADC. This will be fully certified by Two of Rhineland to SIL2 Systematic Capability Level 3. Finally, we have the latest fault protected switches. The ADG5401F is a single pole, single trove switch with feedback channel ideally suited to protecting a DAC output. And releasing later this year is the ADG7421F over voltage protection switch. It's the first analog, low voltage, small signal protection solution on the market, allowing a better trade-off between system protection and precision, ideally suited to protecting ADC inputs. So thank you for watching today's demo. Hopefully it's cleared by using ADI's functional safety offerings, users can ease their path to system certification significantly and shorten the time to market confident in their safety and diagnostic capabilities. For further information on functional safety at ADI, 
you can visit the industrial automation landing page on analog.com. Our functional safety technical specialist, Tom Meany, regularly publishes interesting articles and information on his engineer's own blog, Safety Matters, on analog.com also. And you can, of course, contact your local ADI representative.